back to My View TV, the people's platform, the home of undiluted news, reviews, updates, and your daily dose of entertainment. Don't forget to hit the notification bell. Leave us a comment, like, share, and subscribe. I don't bring nobody forward in your future for me. Everything where you see up my natural talent. Let me tell you something. You see, when you know what to please the audience with, it's simple me. What go on, my people? Hope everybody you know okay. Hope everybody you know alright. Happy is the one who learns to wait as he prays and never lose his patience for God time is the best time. Anyway, people, we can continue the news. Female banker held with US 550k cocaine and a bust in Montego Bay. You want to go on and want to go on up. Can't they make a crisis, girl, I see. I tell you, a 36-year-old female banker has been taken into police custody following the siege of US 550k worth of cocaine and ammunition. The woman who is employed to a popular bank in Montego Bay, St. James, was arrested during an operation by the narcotics police in Goodwill District, St. James, on Wednesday. I still have to go slap with this old crisis, you know. IN vehicle has also been confiscated by the cop. It's reported that at about 6 p.m., a white 2002 Toyota Prado was intercepted at the premises in Goodwill after several attempts by the driver to elude the police failed. So we land there. So why the police they never just fire some grains in night? Eh? Tell them in the police. All in that for just dash where you know. Make that sure you punch they get eight. Just like Steph Curry. The police said during the subsequent search of the vehicle. 10 rectangular shaped package containing cocaine were found. The cocaine weighed approximately 24 pounds. The police said the banker who was driving the vehicle was detained. During a further search of a two story dwelling, house occupied by the banker, a number of magazines and 12 9mm cartridges were found in the bedroom. The items were seized and the suspect was arrested on reasonable suspicion for breaches of both the dangerous drugs and firearms act. Ah, you know, all of this could have been avoided. All of this could have been avoided, you know. We'd have a casket put down for you. All that for do a slap away. We we'll land on now, people. More bank story. Three more persons have been charged in connection with the theft of 46 million from an account at JMMB. Has a 46 million just gone like that in a one go? No need to worry. The man they know say, film 46 million dollar coming back by any means necessary. If it means the JMMB have to go push up interest rate, forget the help. That is what they're going to do. But anyway, charges were laid on Thursday. Several persons have now been charged in connection with the scam. Investigators report that the accused gained access to the customer's account and illegally removed the fund. I must stop them though. You understand? JMB Bank called the police in March after the customer reported that more than 40 wire transferred from his account without his knowledge. The funds were transferred to bank account of more than 30 individuals. And the right to the get the 30 individuals come from, do you understand? Big, 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 big business. Let me account, make a push some money in it and give a thing. And that I go on for a go on. The second defendant charged in the 2014 murder of a car dealer, Robert Mendez, was sentenced to a total of 32 years in prison when he appeared before the Supreme Court on Thursday. John Jarrett, yes, people, pled guilty on Wednesday to murder and illegal possession of firearm. Jarrett was sentenced to 17 years for murder, but will have to serve 15 years before becoming eligible for parole. I mean, know somebody in the comment section going to say, but we we'll land there. Oh, cartel get so much of this man of the murder and get them a little bit of time there. You want a man? Go to Supreme Court, go to judge. Don't ask me. He was also sentenced to 15 years for illegal possession of firearm and ammunition. The other accused, Bertram Jenkins, was sentenced to 31 years in prison after he was captured in Canada in 2015 and deported to Jamaica. Mr. Mendez, who operates Payless Car Mart off Maxfield Avenue, was shot inside his office. I don't know if you remember that news there. But we never had a read news them time, so maybe them be hide it from you. Anyway, now, people, guess which part I'm gone? Right down at St. James. The St. James police named 10 wanted men. And guess what? They all are needed dead, 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 dead. Not alive. All instead of them supposed to get strapped with. Every single one of them. Me and you know, see so you know them. See the boy them, I know. First on the list is Taji Clark, OC Fatted. He's from Salt Spring, Montego Bay, and he's wanted for murder. Of Christopher Campbell, O.C. Bigfoot. He's from the Norwood area of St. James, and he's also wanted for murder. Of O'Shane Earl, otherwise called Motombo. He's from the, the Spring Garden area of St. James, 
and he's also wanted for murder and shooting at the police. Also wanted is Kenroy Roach, OC Ticker, and he's, he's from the Hampton District in St. James, also wanted for murder. Five, Romain mm. Top, OC Dutchman, wanted for murder. Next on the list is Orion Dunn, OC Mike of Paradise Crescent Norwood, and he's wanted for double murder. Next is Leon Higgins, OC Futter of Roseites, and he's also wanted for murder. Shaquille Nath Nathaniel Brown, um, he's wanted for murder as well. And he's of the William Street, Montego Bay, St. James era. Last on the list are Shane Morgan, otherwise called OK, who is wanted for murder. And Joshua Nokoy Anderson, otherwise called Josh Hollage, a contractor also wanted for murder. Superintendent of Police in charge of the St. James Division, Carlos Russell, is seeking the public's help in providing information that will lead to their capture. These persons are considered armed and dangerous, and we are asking these men to turn themselves in to the nearest police station. We're also asking the citizens of St. James, our adjoining parishes, if they know of the whereabouts of these men, they are to contact the nearest police station, or they can call 311, or 119. Um, I also want to, to let persons know that it is an offense to harbor a fugitive and persons can be charged for doing so. Well, and they call all the police, them on the station, tell them gather around, gather around, and come, come listen, we have piece of information for them. Yeah, man. You see them, my boy, yeah? A lifting business we are dealing with, yeah, man. Wrap up in a sheet or in a chapel in or put down pan, lie down board. No boy no fear walk going behind the bars with no handcuff pan them and no 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 So you no need for do Kill them all and do Add that me a talk about I me try add this to it Them the boy they supposed to dead Right pan spot So what I said that I mean what I said that me not take it back Don't make me the right so sit down and hear say Wanna shoot them and go so boom Rush care them go hospital to save them life No 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 Now we tax taxpayers dollars pan them None tall. Anyway, no people. This is Wagwan Pan Wagwan now. Reputed leader of one order. Gang fractured. Expected to be charged. But we'll land it. We're not going to charge him for. Me just ask you, you know. What is it? We're not going to charge him for. We're not charge him for Brian Sykes. Let him go. Me just ask for a friend. A man reported to be a major player in the recent upsurge of gang violence in Spanish Town St. Catching is in police custody. The police say he expected to be charged following a question and answer session. In a statement, the Jamaican constable force said Damian Davis, otherwise called Was or Spinball, reportedly turned himself into the police yesterday. Davis was in the presence of his attorney. Remember, criminal all is a blah and them thing there. Davis was listed as a person of interest in relation to several incidents in the parish, including murders, shooting, and other violent crime. Yes, people are scamming too. You understand? The St. Catching North Police say investigations are continuing. Police sources indicate Davis, yes, people, Davis, one of them is the reputed leader of the 31. John's Road faction of the one other gang. The gang was reportedly at the center of a gun violence that rocked the old capital on Tuesday afternoon. I know what people they don't this already. So I'm mean, have to go back in another part there. You understand? But people, me just a wait for see exactly where they maga charge him for and what I go and power what I go on. Because Chief Justice Owe oh, no Brian Sykes, yes, yes, Brian. The man they go everybody, man. The man they are go everybody. Who not see it for yourself? Anyway, like what time about with my Lego? We're going to have a Supreme Court here one. Up there upon the Clansman Kang trial because it's coming to an end. <laughs> yes, Monday shall be the day. We we'll know exactly what I want, what I want. Who will come around, who will stand behind bars, or whatever I got. So, don't worry yourself. Here now, give us an update here. The Klansman gang trial is winding down. Chief Justice Brian Sykes is said to hand down his ruling on Monday after the nearly year-long landmark trial. Anticipation looms as the country and the region await the fate of Andre Blackman Brian and his co-accused. In a last-ditch effort to save their case, the prosecution in the Klansman gang trial attempted to use firearm evidence to connect two incidents. 
Through the examination of ballistic evidence, the prosecution said that the alleged recovery of a Sigsor pistol from defendant Tariq James in 2017 is connected to the Fisheries murder earlier that year. However, there was no tangible proof to the evidence that was gathered, as the photos that were taken at the scene were lost. Presiding Judge Brian Sykes lamented the prosecution's insistence on presenting faith-based statements, like expert testimony. Sykes says, It can't be that you have a homicide in the 21st century and no record. So if the police officer recovers these things, they don't have to record it somewhere? Contemporaneous records. So even if you say the photographic images are lost, computer crash, there is no log to say I received this item? The prosecution tried to compare the Fisheries and Price Wright murders to prove evidence gathering, but Sykes said it was like comparing chalk and cheese, as one incident has evidence while the other had none at all. Sykes goes on to explain to the prosecution, what you are proving, in the case of Tariq James, is illegal possession of firearm. What you must begin to grasp, the way in which the case is constructed, it is dependent on proof of crime in order to prove the existence of the organization. If that is the way the case is constructed, the proof of the underlying crime needs to be complete. As it stands, the evidence does not connect the defendants as members of a criminal organization, but persons accused of various offenses. In response, the prosecution conceded, we are where we are. The judge is set to deliver his ruling on Monday. Town can never cool down. Let me know when I shoot him. I say you got dog. Brother. Don't let him shoot you. Don't let him charge you. I'm going to shoot you, boy. I'm going to shoot you, boy. I'm going to shoot you, boy.